In 2007, it seems every car company had a convertible with a fancy electric retractable hardtop, but nowadays they seem to be abandoning them for soft tops. Why did they suddenly become popular almost a hundred years after they were invented, and why are they now disappearing almost as quickly as they appeared? Let's find out. Benjamin P. Ellerbeck could only have been around in the early 20th century with a name like that. He designed the first retractable hardtop in 1919, a manual system that fitted on top of the boot, not in it. He turned his idea into reality three years later and pitched it around to the major car companies, including Ford, but with no interest. Georges Paulin had the same idea in France just a few years later. While watching a poor driver wrestle with a soft top in a downpour, soaking the car's interior, he had the same idea. Why not have a roof that could be quickly assembled and stowed? He patented the idea in 1932 and, like Benjamin P. Ellerbeck, peddled it around the established coach builders in France. There were some promising leads, but again, the idea went nowhere. But it led to Paulin, a dentist by trade, becoming a top car stylist in the 1930s. He sold the hard top patent to Peugeot in 1935, who would go on to produce the first production retractable hard top. When the Nazis invaded in 1940, Georges Paulin would actually bravely work with the British resistance, dying for his country just two years later. Over in the USA, General Motors had created what some would call the first concept car, the Buick Y-Job, and Chrysler wanted to make something to respond. They dreamt up their vision of the future, the Chrysler Thunderbolt. It would build on Peugeot's retractable hardtop with an elegant system that again folded into the boot, leaving little room for anything else, not even the rear seats. The designer, Alex Tremulis, would go on to dream up the even more futuristic nuclear-powered Ford Seattleite concept in the early 1960s. After the war, independent American car producers made their own retractable hardtops, the first being the Playboy Motor Car Corporation, no, not that Playboy, as the Playboy Convertible. Like many small car companies, their dreams were bigger than their finances could allow though, and just 97 were made before the company folded. Wealthy industrialists James and Edward Gaylord also tried their hand at independent car production, creating a Rolls-Royce competitor no less. They initially approached Alex Tremulis to design it, but by the time they were ready to create the car, he'd moved to Ford. His recommendation, Brooks Stevens, created the 1955 Gladiator that looked like a Rover P6 pretending to be a Batmobile. It incorporated many clever design elements though, such as a slide-out spare tyre under the rear panel, electric seats, and the world's first electrically retractable hardtop. The car was actually pretty lightweight, which made it fast with a 0-60 time around 8 seconds, blindingly fast for the 1950s. However, problems with the fabricators and a nervous breakdown led to only three cars ever being made. Ford were also working on their own electrically retractable hardtop. The first had been designed for the 1953 Continental Mark II, but the concept was rejected for cost and marketing reasons. It would eventually appear on the Ford Fairline 500 Skyliner in 1957. Lucy, honey, look, you know how to take ice cubes out of a refrigerator, but it's an automobile, it's a complicated machinery. Women just don't understand. Once more, the boot was almost entirely taken up with the roof, limiting the car's use. The mechanism was complex, involving seven motors, four lift jacks, relays, ten limit switches and solenoids, 185 meters of wiring, and six locking mechanisms to ensure the roof and rear cover stayed in place. But it was well made and reasonably reliable, and Ford would go on to sell almost 50,000 of them. But presumably this was less than they'd hoped for, as production ended after just three years. And so, with that, the idea of powered, retractable hardtops fell silent. Convertibles continued to use soft tops, and drivers continued to get caught in the rain assembling them. That was until 1989, when Toyota added an electric, retractable hardtop to the Toyota Sora Aero Cabin. 
The Sora, based on the Toyota Supra, was actually a bit of a technology demonstrator, featuring a touchscreen climate control system in 1981. In 1986, Toyota introduced the Electro Multivision system, a TV system that showed the car's health while you're driving and TV shows when you're stationary, and used the world's first electronically controlled air suspension system. Although the hard top retracted, the structural elements of the car remained, meaning it was closer to an electric Targa top that also removed the rear window. You might think, being Toyota, it was a smooth, quiet process, but with all the warning buzzers going off, it was a cacophony of sound. You put the open button. You have to release that button and then push one more time. Buzzers, and then top goes up. Like previous attempts at a retractable hardtop, boot space was limited, with a comically tiny opening. Still, it was a demonstration of how modern, computer-controlled electronics could be used to make a practical, retractable hardtop. Toyota ended sales of the retractable hardtop, but the Sora would morph into the Lexus SC. Honda offered a similar option around the same time on the CRX Del Sol as the Trans Top, with this amazing and overcomplicated way to get a target top into the boot. In the 1980s, the American Sunroof Company became the go-to company for converting regular family cars into convertibles. They took note of the Toyota Sora and worked on their own version, showing it off in 1991 on a Nissan 300ZX. Mitsubishi chose to use it on their sports car, the 3000 GT, launching it in 1995 as a 3000 GT Spider. The cars were built without the roof in Japan, then shipped to the American Sunroof Company, where the hard top was added. Mitsubishi announced the initial run of 1800 cars was sold out, but by the end of 1995 there were complaints from dealers that the cars just weren't selling. After selling only a thousand cars in 1997, Mitsubishi stopped selling them. A less than auspicious start then to the retractable hardtop's triumphant comeback. It would take a German car company to popularise the retractable hardtop. In 1994, the year Mitsubishi was touting its new Spider, Mercedes showed off the SLK concept with its Vario roof. Just two years later, the public could get a hold of one, and this time it wasn't just an expensive option on a top-of-the-line model. All SLKs got this feature. Mercedes had engineered a product that just worked, a relatively simple design that was fast to open and close. You weren't recommended to open it up in freezing conditions though, but then who really wanted to? Importantly for a cabriolet, it looked good both when it was up and when it was down. The first version sold well, over 300,000 in eight years, and it made other car companies sit up and take notice. Maybe Mercedes had finally made a practical open top, and their own range of convertibles could benefit from the same trick. Competitors tore the SLK apart and started working on their own versions. They found that the mechanism could be produced at a price that could not suit just luxury cars like the SLK, but mass market cars. This caused an explosion in the number of retractable hardtops. By 2005, there were 10 models. By 2009, there were 21. It wasn't just exotics and luxury cars either. The Mazda MX-5, Renault Megane, Ford Focus, Vauxhall Opel Astra, and even the Nissan Micra had retractable hardtops. Peugeot had added it to their diminutive 206 in 2001, the first Peugeot to have a retractable hardtop since the 1930s. By 2010, it seemed the world was in love with a retractable hardtop, yet just 11 years later, it was down to just eight models. What happened? Well, let's look at why you might want a retractable hardtop over a soft top. It gives better security, as it's relatively easy to slice open the soft top with a knife and steal any valuables in the car, or even drive the car away. Having the additional insulation of a hard top means lower road noise. Having a soft top flapping around making noise with a plastic back window makes your expensive car feel second best. Soft tops were historically fiddly, manual affairs to assemble. The new retractable hardtops made putting the roof up simplicity itself. 
And then there's the cool factor. Retractable hardtops are undeniably cool, and part of the draw to a convertible is the wow factor. But over time, soft tops have eaten away at these advantages. You can keep your valuables in the glove box or the boot, and immobilizers and GPS trackers have made stealing cars much harder. Modern fabrics and techniques mean today's soft tops are more than just a thin sheet of fabric, and this makes the car much quieter. Cars are generally much quieter anyway, with sound deadening in the engine bay. Soft tops aren't fiddly any longer. There's no reason why they can't use the same technology retractable hardtops use, which makes them go up or down in seconds. Retractable hardtops may have been cool in the year 2000, but 20 years later, they didn't have the same wow factor. There were less people who'd pay more for this technology. If there were, you can guarantee car companies would continue offering them. Then, of course, there's the disadvantages of the retractable hardtop. It takes up a lot of space in the boot and usually leaves a letterbox shape to post your overnight bag. Soft tops take up less room, and when you're thinking through the practicalities of owning a convertible, that extra space matters. The soft topped 2020 BMW 4 Series has 15% more boot space than the old hard top model. Hard tops are, of course, much heavier than soft tops. The soft top on the 2020 BMW 4 Series is 40% lighter than the old model. Weight is of paramount importance to car companies. Weight means less speed, weight means less fuel economy, and weight, particularly up high like this, makes cornering less nimble. Mazda is one company that's tried to address this with their MX-5 hardtop made partially from plastic rather than being all metal. And one big factor to any car company is cost. They'll only put something on a car if they'll get more for it than it costs for them to add. Why make a hard top when a customer will pay the same price for a soft top that's cheaper to produce? But maybe the biggest reason for the smaller number of hard tops, or soft tops for that matter, is the rise of SUVs and crossovers. With fewer regular passenger cars being produced, it's harder to justify the cost to modify them into convertibles. When car companies do, there's fewer and fewer being sold. Just look at the granddaddy of the retractable hardtop, the Mercedes-Benz SLK. Sales have tailed off to the point that production ended in 2020. It's a similar story for the Mazda MX-5, a car that made its name as a soft top, even though there's an excellent retractable hardtop version. Companies have tried to make convertible crossovers and SUVs like the Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet or Range Rover Evoque convertible, but customers don't seem to want them. A reduction in convertibles will naturally mean car companies will want to save money anywhere they can to sell to this diminishing market. Retractable hardtops are unfortunately only still available on exotic supercars, with the notable exception of the Mazda MX-5 RF, which is really more of a targa top. Expensive sports cars go longer between significant revisions, which may be why they still have retractable hardtops. Plus, many of the disadvantages just aren't important for a car that for some is essentially a fashion accessory. Retractable soft tops are still available, and they're a great option. But if you really want a retractable hard top, the used market is your best bet.